But one thing that's common to these late stage cancerous cells is that they acquire the ability to metastasize. So they acquire the ability to break through the basal lamella, get into a blood vessel and be transported to another distant region of the body where there's a chance they can invade a tissue or an organ and establish a new colony of cells that can outcompete the cells of that new tissue or organ. So, um, so, so as the tumor progresses, um, cells can invade surrounding tissues, they can get into the circulatory system, they can um, move to different parts of the body and set up additional colonies in different tissues. And this process here is referred to as metastasis. So this is just showing here um, an example where a primary tumor that occurs in one tissue can migrate to a second site. In other words, it can metastasize to a second site and it can form tumors within the other healthy tissue. So what we have here is a microscopic view of a tumor that has invaded a normal liver. So this is so these this is the normal liver um, cells here, and a cancer from another part type of the body has metastasized, got into the bloodstream, got into the liver, and then established these new colonies, these new outgrowths of cells within the liver. And this is just showing um, a similar thing, but looking at a microscopic level rather than a macroscopic level. So this idea of metastasis is not a new idea. It was, um, if you look in the literature, I did a bit of a literature search, and I found a reference to a paper which dates back to 1889, which really astounded me. And, um, and it's um, a doctor who was, must have been working in the morgues and looking at um, um, patient samples from um, deceased people, and he was able to um, identify cancers um, in one part of the body that had spread to other parts of the body. And he wrote a paper on the distribution of secondary growths in cancers of the breast. So patients with breast cancer, were, he also was able to identify other cancers in those patients in other tissues. And hence, people started to think about this idea of metastasis as being a late stage in, in, in a cancer um, life cycle. So um, a bit of background information here is that the, the cells in our body are, you know, are, are in close proximity to each other. Their, their close proximity limits their growth. They, they're, they're aware of their neighbors and they don't grow inadvertently as they come into contact with their neighbors. And also, they are physically attached to their neighbors so that they can't physically break away. So neighboring cells limit each other's growth and they, they, they can't physically break away from each other. But for metastasis to occur, um, the growth characteristics of the cell, as we've described, become um, that they, they have these additional growth characteristics, but they also pick up the ability to break away from their neighboring cells um, and there's a key protein in the extracellular domain of these cells or the extracellular surface of these cells um, referred to as a cell adhesion molecule, C-A-M, cell adhesion molecule. And one of these cell adhesion molecules is um, cadherin. And this is just showing normal cells with these cell adhesion molecules here being integrated within the neighborhood and the mutant cell in which it's lost a lot of its um, attachment molecules, so it's able to break away and, and it's got its own growth signaling so that it can survive in the absence of contact to its neighboring cells. And it's also able to release um, some proteases or some digestive molecules to digest through the um, extracellular matrix and, and it's able to break through this basal uh, membrane or this basal lamella. So this little diagram I was showing you here is, is like a, a view of what's going on here. So this late stage cancer has metastasized. It's broken through this, um, this, um, this basal lamella. So the extracellular matrix 
here has been digested by these proteases released by the cell, which have been overexpressed in that particular cell type as part of the mutation process. And then it's able to um, move through and find its way into a um, capillary and be transported to a distant region of the body. And in some cases, it's able to pass through the um, blood supply because capillaries are again only one cell thick. So it's able to break through these small fine capillaries and get into other tissues and organs. Um, this is the same information shown in a different diagram showing normal cells picking up genetic or epigenetic changes leading to a um, population of cells which are outgrowing and competing those around it. And at some point, it's going to have to break through these cells here, exhibit loss of attachment, get into this, this blood vessel here. So this is um, a cross-section of a blood vessel. And then when it gets into the blood vessel, it can then be transported to another region of the body. So cells need to um, survive in the absence of cell-cell adhesion, which there's a bunch of mutations that allow that. Cells need to express proteases to digest through the, 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 the cellular matrix, and there's a bunch of mutations that drive that. And the cells need to outcompete and outgrow the neighboring cells. And there's a bunch of mutations that facilitate that. And then this is just showing, again, it's a follow-up diagram to this. So the next diagram in this series of diagrams is this one. And this is just showing that from the blood cell, the cells can escape out at a new location into a different tissue, such as within the lung. It's able to escape from the capillary into this fine lung structure. And then once in the lung structure, these cells again can grow and, and outcompete and cause all sorts of problems within the lung. And this is a, a metastasized cancer that was had a, a, originated in another tissue which is now growing in the lung. So during metastasis we have two processes. We have um, intravasation, which is where the cancer cells get into the blood system. And then we have extravasation, which is where these cancer cells are able to survive, get to a new body part, and then break out of the, um, the, the, the thin blood vessel and, and establish themselves into a new tissue or organ. So these are two stages of metastasis which um, the cells have to, um, have to go through before they can establish a new location. So upon successful migration, these metastasized cells then establish another tumor at another location. And we had a primary tumor giving rise to a secondary tumor. So the secondary tumor is, in, is following metastasis, whereas the primary tumor is the tumor that gave rise to metastasis. And this process um, can occur multiple times, leading to a proliferation of cancer in different parts of the body. So people have done some experiments to try and understand what's happening during metastasis. And they've used um, some, some, some melanoma cells. Um, so there's some cells which are, are, are cancerous. And they've, they've radioactively, radioactively labeled these, these cancerous cells. And then they've injected them in, into the body. And then they've looked at other locations in the body where they establish. And it turns out that um, different tissue have different susceptibility to these secondary tumors. So some tissues are more susceptible to having a secondary tumor established in them than other tissues. So some of the properties of the, the where the secondary tumor occurs, um, the tissue in which secondary tumors occurs need to somehow sustain new growth. So, so one of the things that cells need is a, is, is a blood supply to grow. Okay, so these new tissues are often very, uh, are often more likely to support new blood supply to support the new cells. Whereas some tissues are more resistant if they tend to produce 
anti-proliferation factors. So this, the cells just happen to be, be producing some other proteins, other genes are being expressed, which inhibit the growth of these new cells. And, you know, they inhibit, you know, proteolytic enzymes, which allow the invading cells to come in, and they, um, they also limit the supply of blood to these new cells. So some tissues are more resistant, and some cells are more susceptible to these secondary cancers. Now, if a tumor establishes, establishes itself in a new tissue, um, and this is true for the primary or secondary tumor, the tumor can only get to a certain size before its growth is naturally limited. Okay, so if you look at um, these tiny little cells and you look at a population that's about a million cells big, then about a million cells forms a tiny little diameter of a millimeter or two. Okay, and within that millimeter or two, that is a pretty much a limiting size for cells that aren't directly attached to or linked to um, a blood supply. So as the cells grow within this small sphere of two millimeters, there's a lack of oxygen and nutrients in the middle of this clump of cells, and they tend to die. So the, the, the tumor is naturally limited to a small size. So some of these cells pick up additional mutations in genes which control the development of blood supply. So um, they produce um, hormones in higher numbers than these hormones would normally be produced, and these hormones induce the formation of new blood vessels. So, and then um, blood vessel growth is directed towards the tumor, so there are these tiny little two millimeter tumors, once they've got an adequate supply of nutrients and oxygen through blood supply, they can grow um, beyond their, that, that small size limit. And then um, they get nourished, and this, this process is called angiogenesis, which occurs after um, metastasis. So this is um, just a slide showing a primary tumor or a secondary tumor. Um, and we've got these cells which are out-competing and outgrowing, and they get to a certain size, but they're limited in growth until they release these, um, these growth factors, these um, vascular endothelia growth factors. So VEGF, or however you want to pronounce it, um, stands for this vascular endothelial growth factor. And if these cells um, pick up mutations in that gene that lead to its overexpression, then that growth factor diffuses into the neighboring environment it's picked up by the um, blood vessels that respond to that particular growth factor, and then the, um, the blood supply grows towards the, um, the, the, the primary tumor. Okay, so the cell um, hijacks a normal cellular process, which is the, the directing of, of growth vessel, of blood vessels to certain parts of the body. It hijacks that process, and it encourages the, the vessels to grow into the tumor. To provide nutrients to the tumor. Okay, so you can see here now we have a blood supply from the um, the arteries into the fine structure of the of the the cancerous cells. So here we have small tumor producing this VEGF factor, which is picked up by the blood vessel, and then it directs these fine capillaries to grow into the um, the source of the VEGF factor, which is the tumor cells, and it provides blood supply, allowing the tumor to grow at a higher rate and to metastasize and again um, spread to other parts of the body. So it's, it's a vicious cycle. Okay, so that's it for this lecture. Thanks for your attention, and um, I hope that's been of some use to you. So thank you. Goodbye.